Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, um, I'm switching gears here as far as it goes. So, I'm, I'm going to be talking more about uh, this year's uh, presidential election and maybe a couple of other past presidential elections and, and some of like the other midterm elections as far as that goes, to tell the truth. You know, I can't believe it's going to be like my seventh presidential election that I voted in as far as that goes because the first presidential election I voted in was like the the 2000 presidential election, you know, and as far as when it comes to my brothers, it was like their first presidential election they voted in was like the 96 uh, presidential election, you know, as far as that goes. So I... I think it was for for my mom and was probably like the 68 election and for my dad was probably was the 60 election because of the fact that they you know they hadn't turned 21 yet and that was before they had that um, I think it was like the 24th amendment I can't even remember which amendment was that you know or was it like the 25th or the 26th or something like that? I can't even remember exactly which amendment was that that, that lowered the voting age to 18 as far as that goes. So, anyways, um, as I said earlier, the, the first presidential election that I remember a bit was like the 88 election, you know, when it came to, uh, uh, you know, the first President Bush versus, um, uh, Michael Dukakis, as far as that goes. You know what I mean? And then, I clearly remember the other presidential election in 92, you know, the whole Bush and Clinton and Perot for that matter, you know, and in a way, Perot was a bit of a spoiler, you know, in, in that sense, and I think he might have been the reason why Bush had lost re-election back in, in 1982 at that point, and normally it was, it was usually the people who were seeking re-election end up winning re-election, you know, as far as that goes, and so it was just like that nine times out of ten, and so that one thing, you know, when it came to like Bush and Trump and then, you know, Carter, you know, that was one of the things there, you know what I mean? So. I think the way I see it here is that I think a lot of people just see that, especially when it comes to the Democrats, the way how they were handling everything in the last five, last four years at this point. But it's it's not just everything in the past four years that could go like even further than that, you know. Because as I said before about back about two years ago, the whole overturn of Roe v. Wade was kind of was kind of their fault for changing, you know, this, the, the set of rules for the appointments to the Supreme Court, and it was a, the sheer luck for the Republicans, you know, to have, like, to get three justices of the Supreme Court, you know, in four years' time, and that was, probably was one of the reasons why they didn't really help Trump that much back in... 2020, for that matter, was because they got what they won, you know, a conservative Supreme Court, and they don't really need to to do anything of that matter, you know, as far as that goes, and this was just one of those little things that is just, that is just going to set the Democrats back quite a bit because of a lot of things there, and in a way, it's what they said, like, the future is conservative at that 
point because, you know, there are people like me who had voted for Obama back in 2008 who had, you know, voted for Trump in 2020 as far as that goes and, and because of whatever reasons why we felt disappointed with the Democrats and the left as far as that goes. And the, the biggest problem when it comes to the Democrats, you know, when they're trying to cater to the Gen Z crowd, it, they're just, it's just epic fail all around in that sort, you know, for that matter. But in some ways they were trying to recreate, you know, how it was back in 92 for that matter. And then back at that time, you know, I was, I was 11 when we had um, the 92 presidential election. And in a way, you know, Clinton was appealing a whole lot to the Gen Xers at the time. You know, and in that sense, you know, when it came to Obama back in 08, I mean, there was instances where he was basically is trying to appeal to the the millennial generation. And I think the biggest thing there was, you know, I don't know if that was like the case with Carmel Harris, you know, if that were really the case, if she would have stepped in and, and wanting to become president of that sort, you know, instead of Biden for that matter. But then it's like, you know, she isn't really running because she already has, has, um, running things at the helm behind the scenes, you know, just like with Cheney back then, yeah. So, the other thing here was the whole thing with ban on TikTok. It really was just the whole media apparatus trying to control the narrative and all that sort of thing. Here, I'm, I'm talking like uh, sticks in a way. <laughs> you know, Six Hex and Hammer Six Six Six. Anybody that I'm, that doesn't know who I'm talking about, and in a way, it always seems like that you know every couple of years, you know, when there's like these type of presidential elections of that sort, and then and then there's always seems to become a little bit more censorious of that sort. You know, the whole thing of like misinformation. You know, when it came to COVID, when it came to all this sort of stuff, instead of just allowing all viewpoints to there, but instead of just, you know, asserting, you know, this, this is the only viewpoint there is, you know, for that matter, then, then allowing people to, to speak, you know, on other, on other platforms and all that and, and, and it doesn't really make any real difference you know you should, you should push censor all the sort of speech on YouTube or whatever and, and all that it, it moves to a different platform and it's a sort of whack a mole strategy and then the only way they can really you know completely censor things is censoring the internet you know but then if you do that you know then it's, then it's like you know, they're gonna get criticized by China, by Russia, or Iran, or saying something like, well, this is so cool, like, like, saying like, oh, and so you're like, supposedly the land of the free and and the brave, and, and you censor, our, censor internet access more than we do, you know, the sheer hypocrisy of things like that, yeah, and especially what happens when it came to a lot of other, like, you know, western media outlets of that sort, yeah, because in, in a way, before the whole conflict with Russia and Ukraine, I was a long time uh, viewer of RT of that sort. And it was like Russia Day. And watching uh, a lot of different shows, you know, where if it was uh, Tom Hartman's uh, Big Picture back then and before uh, Tom Hartman sang the 
praises of uh, AOC and the same thing with uh, with uh, the Young Turks and all of that and and David Pacman and Kyle Kalinske and all that before they ended up you know drinking the wokeade you know and and singing the, the praises of AOC you know and that was just the thing there and then and then mainly had shifted into like getting most of my you know news and going on from from Temple IRL podcast and, and then um Sticks and all the other people of that sort, you know, were, were, were just simply not aligned to this sort of corporate media apparatus of that sort. And, and you know, and the, the political landscape is, is changing quite a bit because of how we get our news in the sense, you know, because way back in the day, you know, way back in the day, as far as that goes, when, when it was like the early days of the internet, and when it was back, when it was just dial-up, and at the time when, when I was the only person in my class that had access to the internet, and had a computer, and all that, and, and how that was a luxury, you know, then once, you know, once I got into high school, that's when, access to the internet started to get more readily available, you know, when it came to, like, computers and all that, and it wasn't until, like, you know, 10, 15 years ago when, you know, when it was a proliferation of smartphones and all that, you know, and then how it's so easy to, to do all these sort of things at that point, and then, then opposed to how it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. You know what I mean? So, basically, I think that's probably it. So, talk to you guys later.